All right, I'm gonna start part number four on the MEP 1040. It took me a little bit to kind of consolidate together all of the clips. This is gonna be a lot of me running my suck explaining what happened here. Because even as I was editing the video, I realized some more stuff and had to do a little bit of like reading to understand what was going on. But I'm gonna do my best to explain what I think happened to it and basically why it failed. And in case you don't wanna watch through the whole thing, it is a parts unit right now. My conclusion is the stator burnt out. And as it burnt out, it was causing more and more resistance. And that was putting a load on the engine, which caused the coolant to get higher and higher and higher. And then the controller, once it got to the trigger point, shut it down as overheat. Um, but we'll go through everything that led up to that. Part of it could have been my fault. Part of it could have been an underlying problem in the generator. But anyway. All right. I've given it a while to sit here and cool off. I'm going to give power back to it and did mess with it a little bit. Audio is gonna sound weird in this clip because I'm not using my microphone, but I'm doing it for a reason. So when I messed with it, sounded like it was struggling to start and it had me worried that like the motor or something was blown. But I don't think that's the case because normally if the motor was blown, you'd see some other reason. And to be honest, if it shut down at 240 degrees, that's hot, but that's not hot enough to really make the motor blow or it shouldn't be. When I messed with it off the camera and I got it to start again, it gave me an excitation fault. Now what that is, if you're not familiar with generators, is it needs a little bit of power to excite the generator itself to start producing power. And military generators do that themselves. It immediately shut itself down after that. Um, it did it twice. I cut the power at the breaker inside and then I brought it back and did it again and I got it to start. And then the way you see that is when it's excited, you'll start to see the voltage on the legs come up. I noticed the voltage come up, but it didn't come up all the way. It was like around 24, 28 volts, which means there's, it's exciting, but it's having a problem. And you could almost hear, because as it's going through its startup cycle, it's idling, you could hear it like struggling. Now, I don't know if it was like the turbo spooling or something like that. Then immediately what I could also do is I shut it down. You almost smell like that burning wire smell. So I'm wondering if the reason why it shut down and it overheated was because there's a problem in the generator head. Now, was that because I was running it at 12 kW? Possibly. Is that the reason why this was marked as a parts unit? Possibly. Is it just by chance that came up when I was doing this load test? Possibly. I don't know. But I'm going to try to start it here with you to see if you could see it. I know we'll see if it excite faults out or what. Let's see, it's taking longer to crank. I see. Oh, see, now it gave an excitation fault. Now you saw how only one side excited up and this side was like totally dead. Now let's see if it does it again. Because what I wanted you to see and the reason why I didn't use the microphone is to see if you could hear it strain. So I I'm not going to continue to do this because I don't know if it's going to cause damage. But I'm wondering if something is wrong inside the generator head or if there is a wire um, there's nothing obvious but i'm gonna have to do some research basically see what the deal is on why that fault would come up the engine i don't think the problem is in the engine i think what happened is the problem all along with this generator was in the generator head looking through some of the troubleshooting and stuff in the tm for engine overheat shutdown was overload or an electrical short problem. Then through Steel Soldiers, I found a really helpful form of post and for the error code of excitation failure, somebody said to check in here, it is P90. The voltage regulator is built into the screen unit up here. All right, me explaining this in that last clip sucked. So just recording this new one to splice in. So in here, back in there now oh, you can actually see the p90 but the connector goes a little bit farther up that's p90 and then this box right here if you squeeze it and open it you'll see back in there there's circuit breakers there's like in your vehicle they're numbered up top circuit breaker 10 and 11 have to do with the two circuits for excitation and the coil and stuff like that those are part of troubleshooting as well. And I checked them and 
they weren't tripped or bad. I, I actually brought them out and tested them to make sure they did what they were supposed to. P90 is down in there. Basically, what they said to check for to make sure that it's doing what it's supposed to is take a multimeter and make sure that you see some DC voltage. Hey, look, we got a visitor. Just came out. And when the engine is at like 600 RPM, to see that there's some DC voltage. Um, just as the engine started to idle up is when I saw the voltage. Now, I don't know if that's proper, but then when I plugged it back in, what I was trying to show earlier in an earlier recording happened, and I'm gonna see if it'll happen again. So the engine starts fine, and the reason why I'm not using the microphone again is when it starts to ramp up, you can hear it trying to excite and it whines and it causes the engine to struggle if it doesn't try to excite too soon. So it's not trying to excite right now, there's no voltage. And what you'll see is as soon as it starts to ramp up, you'll see the voltage and you're gonna hear a whine. I'm gonna try to be as quiet as possible, but listen for it. I don't know if the microphone can get back up. This obviously isn't for you in the video, but this is for my wife recording. Remember before I asked you? Smell it. Oh, yeah. It smells like burning wires. So I don't know if that's it improperly trying to do whatever. So the only other thing that I could think to try is in that box up there. I have an extra one of these screens for these series generators, but I don't know if it's for this exact model. So if that voltage regulator is going bad and sending like trying to make it excite too much or something like that i don't know um the only other thing that i could think to try right now as i'm thinking of it is if i change it to like single phase not single phase but uh leg one because it seems like leg two so now i'm going to try to run it in just 120 volt mode so it's only off one leg and see if it does anything different i don't know it's giving me a warning just saying that the configuration changed Help. All right, I got my big chief here for notes so I don't forget anything. Just a follow up on two small things for the auxiliary pump and why it didn't kick in, why I was doing the test. So, off camera, while I was doing some of the other stuff, what I did is I swapped the connectors from the main fuel pump and the auxiliary. And when I went to prime it, the auxiliary pump kicked right in because it was being triggered as if it was the primary pump. And I thought that was weird because I figured if I did something wrong, like splicing in, that would have been the issue. So when I put it back over and then moved it to prime run, after about four seconds, the auxiliary pump did kick in. So I think what the problem was is I, I literally just didn't push the connector all the way back together. So that was 100% my fault. Um, the other thing too was, uh, with the new return fuel line that I made, um, it leaking again just a little bit during the test. I don't think the fuel line actually was the problem altogether. Uh, I'm gonna splice in a picture a little bit. There's like this weird, way overly complex like T-block that they use with a plug and stuff in it. I'm thinking that that block may actually be what the leak is coming from and then it was running down. Not sure how I would have missed it and not noticed that before, but it's pretty uncommon for a hydraulic line, especially with it just being used for fuel to spring a leak unless it's really, really old. That's what made me go back and look because my host clamps and stuff were tight on the one that I made. But getting to the main problem, the overall conclusion after pinging it off some other knowledgeable people doing the reading and stuff like that that I did was that there already was an underlying issue with this generator and in the stator winding. The reason why I think that was, I didn't even realize it at the time, but I noticed when I was editing the video that on the leg one and two, the voltage as the test was going on, it kept getting a bigger and bigger different, like difference between the two different voltages, yet the load was almost perfectly balanced uh, between the two, so that shouldn't have happened. Um, somebody else on the forums, uh, Steel Soldiers forums, tested it on 
their similar unit and they said unless they purposely really misbalanced the generator, it stayed perfect. And uh, I don't think the voltage was ever perfect even without a load. I just didn't know that. Because of that, the um, AVR or the um, automatic voltage regulator that's built into the DCS, the screen, it has to make up for that to put out the proper voltage. So I'd be lying if I said I knew exactly what happens inside a generator head. Excitation is the initial surge of electricity that's put into the generator to get it to start creating a magnetic field to generate electricity. And voltage from the uh, AVR is put in there and it should be balanced. The more load you put on it, the more voltage is put in from the AVR. If you're overloading it or it has some sort of issue, it needs to make up for that with voltage to make the generator head put out more. So if there's an issue and it was needing to put increased voltage in there, that increased magnetic field is gonna increase heat on top of the fact that I already was loading it higher than what the generator was rated for and it was a hot day. So kind of was like all those things put together that probably caused the issue. And what would normally happen on a lot of the older generators was is if, if you put too much of a load like that on there, the engine would kind of like sputter out or it could even stall. Um, the engine is turbocharged on this and it's, it's pretty much oversized for what like a 10 kW generator should be. So it was able to push through the issue. With that being said, did I kill it? Maybe. Would it have died anyway, a slow death? Maybe. I, I don't know for sure. If this got continually used, not under 100% load, may have lasted years and years and been okay, probably. Um, like I was saying earlier about the whole generator needing to be disassembled in order to actually check the inside of the stator, that might be the reason why I thought that this entire thing was completely disassembled. They did pull it out, they did check it, they found that problem, they said, no, we're not gonna fix it with 4,000 hours on it, send it to DRMO, surplus it. That's why it was slapped back together and there were so many loose connections and broken body mounts and some cut wires or melted wires. Who actually knows? So, kind of just some opinion things, uh, even though it's gonna be really limited. I call it load shedding. So on the older, like MEP 802, 803, um, if it detects an overload for a certain amount of time, and it depends how much of an overload, what it will do is it will open the circuit and shed the load. So say if 120% is too much for this and it will cause an overheat condition like it did and there was no underlying problem and it was just 100% me, the older generators after a certain amount of time, it will open the circuit and it will say overload to protect itself. They also have other things that they found later on, like the fuse mod and the MOV mod to protect if you're running a little bit too low of an RPM, but you don't have to worry about it on this because it regulates itself. Um, this should do that instead of just having that soft warning because let's face it, I mean, it, it's a perfect case in point. Sure, I kind of know a little bit more about what I'm doing, but my background is I'm a Marine Corps infantryman. So if you issue this to a guy that's just out in the field and you're gonna start and pull power from it, okay, it's giving me a yellow warning. It didn't shut off. It must not be that big of a deal and you're just gonna keep using it and burn it out. So maybe the yellow warning at first should be programmed in. It will let you run it for a certain amount of time and then it should open the contactor as like one of those red warnings and shut the load down um, and let the engine continue to run to cool itself off. Could be part of the reason why a lot of these early made units got surplused because I know there is a new DCS where the Kark paint is all black and it has a newer firmware in it. Um, that might've been part of the new firmware update as they changed some of that stuff. Firmware is considered classified by the military even though this is just a generator. So unless somebody smarter than me out there uh, knows, maybe there's some active duty troop that says, hey, yeah, it will trip if you overload it. You can let us know in the comments or something, that'd be great. Um, otherwise, I think that's a pretty big uh, defect in this uh, to basically just let it eat itself up like that. You know, it's not like I had the battle short up. You know, if I had the battle short up and it ate itself and killed it, then that, that's kind of what that's meant for. As far as like working on this thing compared to some of the older generators, I found most everything on this way easier to work on. Uh, like I changed the radiator on a MEP 802 compared to the radiator on this and it was night and day. 
Um, but I think that was one of the things that they planned ahead on this because there's certain stuff like on the control side because of the screen that you can't even repair. You're basically just going to have to get a whole new screen and they're expensive. Parts I don't think are going to be as easy to get for this uh, because it's an in-service generator. So there's not so much stuff out. Um, though, you could probably go to Cummins Onan, any dealer, give them a part number for this, but anything Cummins Onan direct is very, very expensive. Uh, so can you get it? It's just sort of like the stator that is burnt out in this. I could probably go to them and get it, but it's gonna be real expensive. And uh, I don't really have that much money into this right now. Uh, it's more time. So I'm just gonna let it sit until maybe I see another parts unit pop up. But uh, this video has just been a lot of me talking. I wish it didn't burn out, but again, you could learn from my mistake or agree with me that maybe it was an underlying problem. I, I really think that it was just a little bit of both. I think that it was already dying a slow death. That's why they surplused it. Maybe through all the surplus, maybe there was like something already loose inside the generator head and from it getting jumbled up so much, it just started to work when I got it and I got lucky. Uh, don't know, is what it is. Uh, if I killed it, I killed it. If not, the regardless, at least I found what the problem is now. So it's gonna be just, I'm gonna put some mothballs in there. I drain the fuel out, as you saw at the end of the last video. I'm gonna leave the coolant and stuff in there cause it's all fresh, so it'll be okay. And uh, just have it sit in here. And if I come across the parts I need to fix it, it'll be cool. And I will follow up with a part five if I do that, but I don't think it's gonna be anytime soon. I have a lot of other projects going on. So uh, any input you got in the comments, uh, hopefully you'll learn from my mistakes. Hopefully you learned something from this video to help you use or fix yours. If you got one of these and you don't kill it, uh, don't run it over 11,000 watts. Just, just use it. Anyway, thanks for watching.